Good morning, Daybreak Church. We are so excited for all of you joining online. We are going to get started for our morning services here in a couple minutes. And this couple next weeks is super special here at Daybreak Church. We're preparing as a team for Easter weekend and Good Friday. Jason, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, man. Easter is an incredible time at Daybreak as we are going to be celebrating all that God is doing uh, around the world uh, and what he began doing 2,000 years ago. And that's what we're celebrating. So tell yeah. us what's happening on Friday. So Good Friday, um, which is actually, it's this Friday. We have service at nighttime at 6 and 7 30 p.m. And it is all registration and both of them are going to be indoors. So for those of you joining online, we have indoor services and we are making them as safe as possible. We're socially distant mass. But if you want to join us for the Good Friday services this Friday, it's uh, register online. Um, and then that's only preparing for this, yeah. this Sunday. Then we come to Easter, which is three outdoor services in the stage that's back here. And all three services are just open invitation, bring a friend, uh, bring a family member, and those services are going to be at a new service time. They're going to be at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. So if you want to have a little more space, you might want to come to the early one, but we'll do all the socially distanced stuff, and and it is going to be absolutely incredible. The second thing I want to say about Easter is this is the time when most people are open to coming to church. In fact, the Pew Research firm did a study, and they found that almost 80% of Americans are willing to come to church at Easter or at Christmas, yeah, so as cool. opposed to about 13% that normally come. So right. God has put in your life neighbors and friends and family who need an invitation to Easter, and now is the best time ever. So if you go to our social media feed, you yep. can scroll. Uh, click on and save or screenshot an invitation that you can send to yeah. a friend or family member yep, yep, who yep. needs to be here. This and that's daybreak.church on Instagram. We will be posting that invite today that you are more than welcome to screenshot and send to anybody and everybody you know. But Easter is on Sunday, and then we have Man Cave Madness Man that Cave Monday Madness. at 6.30. It is a $15 cover charge, but if it's your first event with us here at Daybreak Church, it will be free for you. But then the following Sunday, we have something oh, wait special. wait a second. $15 covers food, covers prizes, yes. and the game on a big HD TV yep. screen outside. What's happening the following week? April 11th, the following week on Easter, we are doing water baptisms. Those are going to be indoor only at our 9 a.m. service. If you want to get baptized, you can register at daybreakchurch.org. That's April 11th at our 9 a.m. service. But I think it's about time, it's time. Um, that we're going to go and worship this morning together. I am so excited to worship with you. So wherever you're at, wherever you're standing, you're sitting, I need you to stand up, stretch out, put some headphones some in, space. turn your volume worship. up, and get ready as we worship together this morning here at Daybreak. Good morning, Daybreak Church. Would you stand with us as we worship our God this morning? Come on, he's worthy of our praise. Oh, we sing in deep. Come on, let's put our hands together this morning.
angels, you go before us, and nothing can stand against the power of our God, and you shine in the shadows, and you win every battle, and nothing can stand against the power. the power you of God. In God yes. You shine in the shadows. You shine in the shadows. that you are the conquering king. You overtook hell and the grave for us. So we're able to sing to you freely, Jesus, because you gave it all for us. So we give it all to you this morning without hesitation, without reservation. All the worship, all this praise only goes to you, Jesus. So let's sing about our friend and king this morning. Oh, what a price you pay, trading the highest place. You lay down your crown for me. How great a king, thank you, Jesus. And oh, what a life you Father, you gave up everything. That you would die for How great a king Thanksgiving, we sing. And no one of
feel comfortable. Can we lift our hands this morning? It's a sign of giving the glory, giving the honor, all power to him this morning. And so we sing with all we are. For all you are and all you've done, we lift you, lift you up for all you are. Yeah. For all you've done, we lift you. Let's lift him up this morning. Yeah, let's sing. For all you are and all you've done, God, we lift you. We give it to you. We give it to you for all you are. We give it to you. We lift you. Just worship in this morning.
so excited here at Daybreak Church as we prep for Easter weekend this coming weekend. And to kick off the weekend, we will be doing our Good Friday services this Friday at 6 and 7.30 p.m. Those are registration only, and both of them are going to be inside. So if you're in the room and you want to join us for our Good Friday services, they're going to be in this room this Friday at 6 and 7.30, and you can register for that at daybreakchurch.org. But that's just the start of this Easter weekend. And I was just chatting with our executive pastor, uh, Jason Giannotti, and he was telling me that statistics say people are most likely to say yes to an invite Easter weekend. So I heard that statistic. I love statistics. So I'm sending all my contacts are getting an invite to Easter. So if you wanna invite somebody, daybreak.church on Instagram. We actually just posted on our story an Easter invite that you can screenshot and send to anybody you know to invite them. But our Easter services are gonna be all outdoor this Sunday. And those are gonna be at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. this Sunday. We are, we are so excited for Easter. Um, but then actually, the following week, it's gonna be super special, which will be April 11th. So this Easter is April 4th, the following Sunday, April 11th. We will be doing water baptisms here inside and baptisms are so special. Um, if you're in the room and you haven't yet got baptized or if you're in the room and you know somebody that um, wants to get baptized or you wanna invite them to get baptized, you can register for that at daybreakchurch.org. We will be doing that April 11th at our 9 a.m. service here in Door. It's gonna be super special. You can register for that online, but I'm super thankful that I get to be a part of such a generous church. I mean, we hear about it every single weekend, things we're doing with missions and putting on these outdoor services and having these cool team nights. And that wouldn't be possible if we weren't generous with our finances. And so at this time, we're gonna go into uh, another form of worship um, with our tithes and offerings. And this is gonna be a completely touchless service. So I think they have the, yeah, you can text any dollar amount to 84 three, two, one, or give online at daybreakchurch.org. If you go to daybreakchurch.org, um, there's a give tab on, on the website that you can hit and you can give any dollar amount. But before we do that, could you bow your heads and pray as we pray together over our tithes and our offerings? We're dear Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that your presence isn't confined to a church building, but your presence is wherever we are. Um, Lord, we're so thankful for your faithfulness and we pray, Lord, that your goodness would cover not only the gift, but the giver as well. I pray that you would bless the gift and the giver in the rest of the service and the rest of every single one of our days. And we pray all this in your name, amen. And everybody said, amen. Well, we're so excited and I've honestly enjoyed our, our series. This is how we change the world. Have you guys enjoyed our series? This is how we change the world. It's been so wonderful. Um, but as we go into the sermon for this morning, pay attention to the screen as we watch this video. up at the very end. We figured it out. Welcome. Oh, good. Lights. There are people in here. I can see you. How are you guys? Good. Those of you joining us online, welcome to Daybreak Church. Inside, online, but the people who really know what's up are the people outside in the parking lot right now. I went out there a few minutes ago. They're in their bathing suits, like laying out in beach chairs with Coronas. I'm like, I don't think that's church. <laughs> it's a beautiful Palm Sunday and uh, so excited to be in church with you today. We are going to be wrapping up our series, um, This is How We Change the World, in just a minute. First, I want to talk to the guys. The guys in the room, the guys outside, the guys online. Next Monday night, so it's the night after Easter, we are going to be uh, honoring a long upheld tradition here at Daybreak Church of the guys getting together 
to watch the final game of the NCAA basketball tournament. And we call it Man Cave Madness. Whenever the guys get together, we call it Man Cave Night. And we're going to be doing it outside and watching the game outdoors. And I want to give you a heads up. Um, some of you have never been to a Man Cave event. Some of you have only been coming to Daybreak online. You joined our church in this last year. Come show up outside. It's 15 bucks at the door. You don't need to register. And here's what you get. Uh, you get dinner. You can pick from any of the gourmet food trucks that are showing up. And we went a little extra this time. Like normally it's just a bunch of pub food, greasy food, burgers, cheesesteaks, that kind of stuff. This time though, our vegan brothers, we finally are looking out for you. We got a truck with vegan food. We got poke. We got sushi burritos. I mean, whatever you want, we've got it for you. So it's 15 bucks at the door. You're going to get the brand new 2021 Anchorman t-shirt. Only the guys that show up can get it. And then we're going to raffle off. This is so cool. How many of you are ready for summer? Are you guys ready for summer to kind of come on, bring it on? We're going to raffle off the, like the ultimate dude's beach uh, kit. A Yeti cooler, uh, like a couple of really high-end beach chairs, Viore, uh, surf trunks, uh, an Anchorman beach towels, like a whole package that we're going to give to uh, one of the guys who show up. And if you've never been to an Anchorman event before, it's free for you. Everybody else is 15 bucks. It's free for you if it's the first time you've been to an Anchorman event. Or if you bring a fin, uh, it's, it's free for them as well. Anyone who hasn't come before. And lastly, I want to say this. Where are my basketball fans? Like you're super into basketball. You understand. Okay. How many of you are like me? You're like, what do all those lines on the ground mean? <laughs> a few of you. Okay. I'm just going to be honest. Like I know a bit, but I don't know that much about basketball. So this is not really about basketball. It's about coming and hanging out with guys and eating really good food. So if you don't know about basketball, you come sit next to me. When they shoot like a three-pointer, we can be all, touchdown, you know, and, and it's fine. Doesn't matter whether you know basketball or not, it's about hanging out together. All right, so um, today we're going to ask you to open your Bibles up if you have them to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 28. We're at the end of our series today on Palm Sunday. We're wrapping up, this is how we change the world. And we have been learning together that Jesus... Uh, says in his word that the enemy, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I have come that we may have life and have it to the full, to the max. Like the most fulfilling life you could ever have. And there's four things that we've been talking about that God wants for you and expects from every Christian. And these four things are, first of all, to entrust your life to God, to surrender everything to Him. Remember we drew the picture of the island with all of our stuff on it and all of our family and everything. And He's like, He wants to take over the island of our life because everything we surrender to Him that we entrust to Him, He makes better. So He wants us to entrust our life to Him. Then He wants us to enjoy belonging in a church family, to be, enjoy being a part of the family of God. Church is not a service we attend. It's a family in which we belong. And God designed you, if you're a Christian, He designed you to live in community, in family. The third, so in trust and joy, the third is the word invest. And we learned last week that God wants us to invest our lives for eternally significant things. Invest our money in missions work, in, in building God's kingdom. Invest our time and our talents in serving God's work. That when we get to the end of our life, the only thing that's really going to matter, the only thing that's really going to matter, it's not how many good vacations we had or what car or house we had or any of that. It's going to matter what did we do to build God's kingdom and help more people come to know Him. And that leads us to the fourth and the last thing that God wants for every Christian. And that is the word invite. And trust, enjoy, invest, and invite. And we're going to be learning today that God wants us to invite other people to encounter Him. So if you're taking notes today, here's the first thing I want you to write down. We're going to move very quickly. Four things. First one, our most important assignment is inviting people to encounter God. Our most important assignment in life is to invite other people, our friends, our family, people who maybe are living their lives apart from God or trying to, to live far from God, which is not possible because God is everywhere and He's working in all of our lives. Amen? All the time. Even before, how many of you know before you believe in God, He already knew you and was working on your life? And the same is true for every person that we know. And God wants us to learn how to invest our, our time in the church, but also invite people to come to church, invite people to come to know Him. And we're going to be talking about the importance of that today. In Matthew chapter 28, in a moment, we're going to read Jesus' charge to His disciples, which is the same charge to all of us. 
And uh, if you've ever been the kind of person who's like, you're a Christian, but you're like, I kind of like to keep that low key. I don't really like to make a big thing about it. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of inviting people to encounter God as well. And, and then I'm going to give you a very simple strategy for it. Because most of us get really nervous about like having to share our faith or talk to other people about Jesus. How many know it gets real uncomfortable real fast when you ask somebody, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? They're like, I got to go. Right? So I want to talk to you about a, a strategy that, that really is based off of Scripture that works. Before we do, I want to read a story for you. And I'm going to read a story that I've read many times here at Daybreak. Some of you have heard it before. Those of you that have it, when you hear me read the story, you will understand. It will become self-evident why it is that we read this story over and over at Daybreak Church. Usually a couple times a year. But I took a whole year off for COVID. So here it is. On a dangerous seacoast where shipwrecks often occur, there was once a crude little life-saving station. The building was just a hut, and there was only one boat, but the few devoted members kept a constant watch over the sea. And with no thought for themselves, they went out day or night tirelessly searching for the lost. Many lives were saved by this wonderful little station, so much so that it became famous. Some of those who were saved and various others in the surrounding areas wanted to become associated with the station and give of their time and money and effort for the support of its work. New boats were bought and new crews were trained and the little life-saving station began to grow. Some of the new members of the life-saving station were unhappy that the building was so crude and so poorly equipped. They felt that a more comfortable place should be provided as the first refuge for those saved from the sea. So they replaced the emergency cots with beds, and they put better furniture in an enlarged building. And now the life-saving station became a popular gathering place for its members. They redecorated it beautifully and furnished it as sort of a club. Less members were now interested in going to sea on life-saving missions, so they hired lifeboat crews to do the work for them. The mission of life-saving was still given lip service, but most were too busy or lacked the necessary commitment to take part in the life-saving activities personally. About this time, a large ship was wrecked off the coast, and the hired crews brought in boatloads of cold, wet, and half-drowned people. And they were dirty and sick, and some of them spoke a foreign language, and now the beautiful new club was considerably messed up. So the property committee... Come on. Boo! The property committee immediately had a shower house built outside the club where victims of the shipwrecks could be cleaned up before coming inside. At the next meeting, there was a split in the club membership. Most of the members wanted to stop the club's life-saving activities altogether because they were unpleasant and a hindrance to the normal life pattern of the club. But some members insisted that life-saving was their primary purpose and pointed out that they were still called a life-saving station. But they were fine. Yes, yay! They were finally voted down. Boo! And told that if they wanted to save the lives of all various kinds of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life saving station down the coast. And so they did. And as the years went by, the new station experienced the same changes that occurred in the old. This is where it gets scary. They evolved into a club, and yet another life saving station was founded. And if you visit the seacoast today, you will find a number of exclusive clubs along that shore. Shipwrecks are still frequent in those waters. Only now, most of the people drown. And if you haven't put it together, this is an analogy, an analogy for a church. So many of us who have been around church for a long time, I've been raised in church my whole life. It's really easy when you've been around church for a while to view it as a club. A club for insiders. Let's have comfortable seats with coffee cup holders. Let's make sure the air conditioning is right and everything is good. And if it's not, I'll go find another church that suits my needs. How many of you know the church is not a club? Come on, the church is not a club. We are a life-saving station. And we are God's plan for saving the lives of people around us. That's what he designed church to be. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, I want to read for you. Jesus' mission, it says in Scripture, was to seek and save the lost. But when he left the earth, right before he left, he transferred that mission to us. He transferred that mission to all of us in the room, to those of us watching online, to those of us in the parking lot. And here's what he said in Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Listen, the reason why we're sitting in church today, the reason why there are churches all over the world is because 2,000 years ago, a small, crude little bunch of folks who followed Jesus around took seriously this commission to go and make disciples. And that's what the church is about. We are to go and make disciples. We're not to become a club. We're to go to every corner of the world and share what God has done in our life and invite other people to come and encounter God. And many of us as Christians simply don't. Certainly not in our part of the world. We just don't. Most Christians have never shared their faith. And, and many Christians have never even invited somebody to come to church or to encounter God in some tangible way. And so today I want to tell you why that is. It's important that we understand that. And second, I want to also give you a simple strategy to invite your friends, your family members, people who, who are trying to live their lives apart from God, how they can encounter God. I want you to write this down. Secondly, most of us don't invite others, and here's why. It's because we believe the lie that they are just fine without God. Those of you who are taking notes, write that down. Most of us don't invite others because we believe the lie that they are just fine without God, especially in a very affluent area like North County, San Diego. Those of us that live here, we know we, we live amongst beautiful neighborhoods, right? I was driving into church this morning and the bumper sticker on the car in front of me said, life is rad in Carlsbad. Some of you guys are like me. You live in San Marcos. You're like, well, what about San Marcos? It's almost close. In San Marcos, right? Not quite as rad. And I want to tell you something. Maybe because I've lived here long enough as a pastor and I've had people share stories with me. Sometimes life is sad in Carlsbad. In fact, most of the time I think we get tricked into thinking that because people look like their life is together on the outside, that they're doing just fine. But they're not. And Jesus knew this because he as God doesn't see the outward appearance. He can look at the heart. Look what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 when he was preaching to a crowd. He said, it says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. His heart was breaking. Why? Because they were harassed and helpless. Would you say those words with me? Harassed and helpless. Say it one more time. Outside in the parking lot. Harassed and helpless. Like a sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Basically, there are harassed and helpless people everywhere. But there aren't many people who are willing to help them. If you're taking notes, write this down thirdly. Everyone trying to live apart from God is harassed and helpless. Don't believe that they're doing fine. I know it often looks that way. It's so interesting how beautiful many of the houses and neighborhoods look around just around daybreak church. But again, like I said, because of, of my job, I sometimes get to see what brokenness looks like inside behind the doors of these beautiful homes. I can remember a while back on a Sunday after church, my wife received a text that a mom of a family who lived in Bressy Ranch was missing and it threatened that she was gonna take her life that afternoon. And she got my wife's phone number and she texted her and said, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. And we spent the afternoon driving around Bressy Ranch, Pleasantville. Some of you live there. Driving around looking for this woman. Thankfully, we found her. She actually goes to Daybreak Church now and God has done amazing, restoring, healing work in her life. But, but battling with depression and addiction and going through a divorce and all the pain that was evident in her life is not her alone. That's not the outlier. More often than not, we get tricked by how, how nice people look on the outside. And we forget that God can see what's happening inside. And what's happening inside is that anybody who tries to live their life apart from God is harassed and helpless by the enemy. Suicide. Addiction. Loneliness, depression. These things don't just exist in less affluent areas of the world. We still have the same problems. We just are a lot better at covering them up and hiding them. 
your friends, your coworkers, the person who cuts your hair, the lady who works at the gas station where you get your gas, unless you have a Tesla, <laughs> the person at Lofty, every person you meet is harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd until someone invites them to encounter God. And then God can come and do the work that only God can do in their lives. And we live in a culture I know where talking about our faith with other people is like a no-no. That's like the quickest way to get canceled. You can't talk about Jesus. You can't talk about your faith. we got to keep things like super surface level. God did not put you on this earth to live at a surface level. He put you on this earth to be his life-saving representative to the people that are in your sphere of influence. And I know it can be awkward, by the way. I know it can be awkward to talk to people about faith. Listen, every time I'm surfing and I talk to guys, like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and one of the reasons it's awkward is because unless you're like a missionary to some like remote place on earth, Talking to people about Jesus is talking about somebody who they already know the story, right? How many of you know you don't tell somebody about Jesus and they're like, who is this Jesus you speak of? I've never heard of him. <laughs> right? I've heard it said that sharing your faith or sharing the gospel with somebody now in our time, in our part of the world, is not like, you know, being a missionary for the first time. It's like telling somebody who oftentimes they've already been hurt, they've already been hurt by religion, They've already maybe sometimes tried church and, and they walked away. And I've heard this analogy. It said, it's like trying to convince somebody to get married who's already gone through a divorce. I know. I've already tried it. Didn't work for me. Keep it to yourself. And I want to encourage you that even though some people may not respond with a tender heart, even though it might be awkward for a moment, there is power in the truth of the gospel, and the Holy Spirit is working in every person's life that you know. And so even though you may not feel like you got through, or, or you maybe feel like, oh, it was just awkward, I'm not sure how they take that. It, it means something whether somebody shows it on the outside or not when someone cares enough to talk to them about God and share what God has done in their lives. And even though they may not respond positively right away. How many of you ever heard of John the Baptist? You ever heard of this, like, John the Baptist in the Bible, right? He lived at the time of Jesus. He went around telling people, repent. Well, one of the kings, an evil king, King Herod, had John the Baptist in prison. And I want to read for you what it says, this evil king, how he reacted and responded to John the Baptist who was telling everybody that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the Messiah. Look what it says in Mark chapter 6, verse 20. You can read it on the screen. It says, But Herod both feared and stood in awe of John, John the Baptist, and he kept him safely in custody because he was convinced he was a righteous and holy man. So even though he didn't really believe what John the Baptist believed, he knew that there was something about John. He was a righteous and holy man. Listen to this. Every time Herod, every time Herod heard John speak, it disturbed his soul, but he was drawn to him and intrigued by his words. Even though he had this guy in prison, seemingly had authority over him, he was intrigued and disturbed by what John was teaching, and at the same time, he was drawn to him. And I want to tell you, that's what's going on in the heart of the people in your life who, who don't go to church, who don't have a relationship with God like you have. They may not understand fully. They may be disturbed. They may, may be disrupted if you talk about God. But they are intrigued and they are drawn to God. Why? Because God designed them to need a relationship with him. And if you're living your life not in relationship with God, you may not know exactly why or how to articulate it, but you're harassed and helpless and something is wrong. And so you need to fill that hole in your life that God designed because he put eternity in the hearts of every person and the Holy Spirit is working on their heart. I want you to write this down lastly and then we're going to wrap up. Our job is not convert to convert anyone, okay? It's to share our God story. For those of you that are like, I don't like converting people. I don't like, you're not supposed to convert people. Only God can convert somebody. 
Your job is to be a witness and to share what God has done in your life. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the command to the disciples was this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses, not my converters, not my angry evangelists. You will be my witnesses. What does a witness do? They just say, this is what I saw. This is what happened to me. This was my experience. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. That would be like saying to be witnesses in North County, in Southern California, in the United States and all over the world. It's just larger geographic circles. And that's what happened. Again, that's why we're in church today. It's because this small group of people, they just said, here's what we saw about Jesus. Here's what Jesus did in my life. Here's how Jesus healed me. Here's how Jesus touched me and fixed my life. And what they knew is that the power of the Holy Spirit was on them and on the message of the gospel. If you guys catch this, by the way, this will solve for many of you this anxiety and nervousness about sharing your faith. If it is based on how well you can memorize Bible verses and tell somebody a mini sermon in 15 minutes, you're going to be way stressed out. Your job is not to do that. Your job is to share what God has done for you and not hide it, not be afraid to share it. And this is what I call the two-foot putt principle, okay? Here's the two-foot putt principle. You just got invited to play in a pro-am golf tournament, and your partner that you are signed with is Phil Mickelson. It's you and Phil. And the only rule is, on every hole, you have to take one shot. The Phil can do everything else. And so, probably, unless, and I know some of you guys here can hit the ball long and straight, but if you're like me, shorten off to the side, you're probably going to say, Phil, why don't you get us off the tee? How many of you are with me so far? Right? <laughs> then the next shot, Phil, why don't you get it up onto the green? <laughs> then when it's like 30 feet away, hey, Phil, why don't you get it like two foot away from the cup, and then I'll take my shot. And then your job is to come from there to here and just, come on, tap, 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 tap it in, tap, tap it in. It's a two-foot putt. That's your job when it comes to sharing your faith. The Holy Spirit is doing all of the hard work. He's the one already working in the lives of the people that you know. They may not say it to you. They may not be vulnerable with you. They might act like it. But God is already working in their life. How many of you know that God was working in your life before you finally said yes to him? Right? How many of you are in church because someone invited you to church? All of us. I mean, I was invited by my parents. It wasn't really an invite. It was more like, a, you're going to church. But a lot of you, you got invited by somebody, and that's why your life got changed. So I want to give you this simple strategy, and, and, and this is what we're going to ask you to try and put into practice even this week as we head into Easter. Four things. Here it is. Pray for unchurched friends and family. You should always be doing this. Anyone in your life that you know, even if you don't know their name, pray for the person who, who serves gas there. Pray for the person who works at, at the coffee shop you go to. Pray for your spouse. Pray, I'm sure if you're married to somebody who's not, you already are. You pray for them. Second, share how God and church has helped you. It's a really practical thing. Like, why do I go to church every Sunday? In your neighborhood. Why is it every Sunday when they're out doing other things, you go to church? Is it out of obligation? No, because here's what God has done in my life. Third, invite people to church. This is the easiest week to do it. This and Christmas time. I don't know if you've ever heard of CEOs, but there are a lot of CEOs in North County. Christmas and Easter only. Creasters. And every Christmas they want to light a candle and sing a song. And every Easter they want to go to church. And this year we're doing it outdoors. So I want to encourage you to invite somebody. And then the fourth one, most importantly, trust the Holy Spirit is working in their heart already. By the time you invite somebody, God has already been working in their life. So I want to ask you to do this right now. I want to ask you to think of one name of a family that you know. Maybe a friend that you have. Think of one name right now. And we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray and ask that God would give you an opportunity to invite them. And then you're going to see, I'm going to, I'm going to have them put up right now a QR code on the, on the screen. And as we're praying, we're going to pray for them. And I want you to pray for them out, their name out loud, if it's a whole family or if it's a couple of people. And then when we're done, before we leave today, this is going to stay on the screen when service is over. Those of you that are online, we're going to leave this up on your TV screen, out in the parking lot. And after we're done, you're going to aim your phone camera. You're going to open up your camera, unless you don't have a smartphone. If you have a phone that flips open like this, 
www.daybreakchurch.org or something like that. I don't know, okay? But for the rest of you, if you scan this, open your camera app when we're done. I'm going to pray and then we're going to wrap. Open your camera app, aim it at that, and it will send you to an invite um, uh, image that you can put on social media, that you can text somebody. But I want to encourage you more than just like posting on social media. We're going to pray right now that you would have the courage to share your story, invite somebody to come to church with you this Sunday. Would you stand with me if you're in the room? If you're out in the parking lot, I want to invite you to stand up. And as I pray, you pray for them. Lord, we know that our world is full of people who are harassed and helpless. And we pray, God, that you would help us to have the courage to, to, to take the two-foot putt. Lord, help us to remember that without you, everyone we know is harassed and helpless. But you're working in their heart. Holy Spirit, you're, you're already at work drawing them to yourself. And you've entrusted to us the responsibility of being a life-saving station, of inviting people to come and encounter you. Lord, we lift up this Easter. May our parking lot be full of people who for the first time come and invite you to be their God and learn what it's like to have that loving relationship and be adopted into your family. Lord, we lift these people before you right now and pray that you would give us the courage and their hearts to be open. In Jesus' name.